Church, which is otherwise known as the Philadelphia Church. Amen. But I want to go back to that text. So let's stand together. Would you turn with me this morning to Revelation chapter 3? I know you probably know this text by now well, so let's just read verse 11. Amen. Revelation chapter 3, verse 11. Are you with me this morning? Amen. Amen. The text says, I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have in order that no one Take your crown. Amen. Amen. I just want to talk on the subject this morning of fight for it. That's right. Amen. Amen. Fight for it. Amen. We love you today. Can't live, think, breathe. No mm -hmm. without you. We pray that you would bless us to teach and preach your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. See you on this morning. It's it's amazing how. Society has revalued what we would call valuable mm, yeah. and what we would call precious. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of YouTube and the media telling me what's valuable to me. Right. Because I know when you got something valuable in your hand, you're not going to let nobody take it. That's right. Mm -hmm. There's some stuff that folk just ain't going to take from you. I know you're saved and sanctified. <laughs> but some some stuff, if you walk up on me, I, I'll give you my wallet. You can, come, you can have it. I, I, I doubt if my car is even locked now. You can have it. Uh, you can come on in the house. I'll give you the big screen. But reach for my wife. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Huh? Reach for one of my kids. And you gonna find out I'm a fight for it. <laughs> you can have the stuff. I wish I could preach to somebody and say, like, yeah, yeah. I'm saying, yeah, I've been called to fight for that. Not all. Find out. Come on, somebody. That right. I'll fight for it. Amen. There ought to be something in you as you grow in God, as you walk closer and closer to Him. The stuff that easily took your joy, that easily made you act out of character right. and resort to the flesh. After a while, you, you should be able to fight for victory. Oh, yes. After a while, you should say, no, I'm tired of being depressed right. every Sunday night. I'm tired of acting like God ain't able to do. No, I'm just a no, I'm going to fight. I'm grown now. When I was a child, I cried every time the devil took my joy. I said, you can have it. Every time church folk bad at me, I said, it's all right, I'm sorry. I called the pastor. Y'all don't like but I'm grown now. No, I'm going to fight for my... I didn't wake up this morning to go home depressed and say, no, I'm going to fight for it. Yeah. you got to be telling people that when you get saved, you're on your way to Disneyland. No, you didn't join the biggest fight of your life. Ain't right. nothing cute about being saved. you got to fight your flesh. You're going to have to fight uh, girlfriends and boyfriends. You're going to have to fight all kind of stuff. Yes. Yeah. Fight for it. Right. <laughs> Don't let nobody take your cry. Right. Jesus said. You know, one time Jesus was talking to somebody, somebody and, and he said, uh, the kingdom of God. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what circus church you go to. Right. He said, but the kingdom of God suffered violence. I wish I could help somebody. Yeah. And the violence Take it. They don't go to prayer and start and, and give up. They go to prayer and take back what the devil stole. They go back and take back their money. Take back their keys. Take back that habit off you. I came to make a fight around you. I'm going to fight for it. Got to gotta, gotta fight for it. Uh, Jesus said this. He said, uh, I, I don't want you to let nobody take your crown. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. that, that's an interesting mm -hmm. 
praise. Because Jesus is blessing the church of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. He's opening doors that no one can shut. He's grabbing them, just dumping all kind of blessings on them. There is absolutely almost no negative implications in the text of Philadelphia. But before he leaves, he said, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I know you're a church full of love. Mm -hmm. But you may have to cut somebody to keep your crown. That's right. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know I'm talking to nice people. Because <laughs> huh? I didn't have no rebuke from him in the text. But I do want to let you know that, 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 that there is devils and demons and people situations mm. that want to take the crown off your head. That want to, that, 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 not, 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 not your reward, not, 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 not your heaven, not your salvation in the sense of, but they do want you to live in heaven and have no reward. They want you to get to heaven and say, I barely made it. They want to they take your crown so that you will be rendered ineffective on earth. So now you got to just sit in the corner of the church and just wait for Jesus to get back because your record's messed up, you touched on everybody because you didn't, someone didn't stole the glory that God set on you. And you protected your car and your 401k before you protected your crown. <laughs>
making a stew with your weaknesses in it. Because the red was from him, but your color might not be red. I ain't going to help no preach. I ain't going to call nobody out. But the devil is making a stew with your weaknesses and your proclivities in it. And he's waiting for you to come in here hungry, tired, and say, you can take my crown for nothing. Does Pastor Brown tell you how valuable it looks? Woo. No, Jesus said, hold on to it. If you get home, call on me. Wait till I show up. That's right. If she's not your wife, don't even look at her. Ain't nobody going to help you preach her. Uh, no matter what you do, don't let nobody take your crown and render you useless because I got a plan and a purpose for your life. Your crown, Holly Park, is the evidence and the proof that you have endurance and victory. Amen. I, I need some evidence, because when you ask somebody how they're doing, they always say, I'm blessed and victorious. Well, why is your crown missing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I know you got your church face on, because everybody have to in church. But, 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 but who stole your crown? Because when your crown is on, you can be have joy even though your house is on fire. When your crown is on, you're crazy even though your kids, even though your kids are crazy. And you don't need a hypocrite face at church because I'm protecting my crown. You can have my stuff. You can have anything. But no, I ain't going to keep my crown because I can walk away like a queen or a king in any situation. Amen. Jesus said, don't let nobody take it. Some of y'all got somebody in mind who took it. Get it back. Yeah. That's right. Jesus said, I went to church and the pastor told me not to be nice. <laughs> I wish I could help somebody. He told me to come back and snatch my crown back. That's right. Uh, he told me to get an attitude. I said, give me my crown back. I'm not trading my anointing. I'm not trading my power. You didn't save me. I got a God to believe. And he is a reward of this. Me nervous. I'm tired of going to these churches and teaching me to live in the heaven. 
teaching me I'm always going to be tempted. Teaching me that I can't say no to a woman who's not my wife. I'm tired of all these lip preachers. Get out the pulpit if you can't preach me a victory. I'm taking my crown back because I don't want to be sitting here with that woman. I'm not cool with it. No. That, that, that's like having a car with no engine. Right? <laughs> Because to live is Christ and to die is 
is giving. So Timothy, uh, since you're my son in the faith, uh, I want you to do me this favor. I, I want you to walk in the same steps that your daddy walked in. Uh, I want you to come to your industry of your ministry uh, and say what I can say. Uh, that I fought, uh, yes I did, uh, a good fight. Uh, yes I did. Uh, I didn't fight over foolishness. Uh, I didn't fight for my house. Uh, I didn't fight for my car. Uh, I didn't fight for my stuff. Because uh, that would not be a good fight. Uh, but I fought a good fight. Every time a devil uh, sent a naked woman to take my ministry, I, I just kept on fighting. Uh, every time a backbiter uh, kept talking about me, I, I was tempted uh, to go to the trunk on them, uh, but I shut the trunk up uh, and I just kept on fighting uh, a good fight. Uh, I prayed for those who persecuted me. Uh, I love those uh, who hated me uh, because I discovered uh, that if I find uh, a good now, if I keep on praying, if I keep on holding on, if I stay steadfast and face my course, I kept the faith. Yes, I did. And laid up for me. Y'all ain't gonna be preaching. It's a crowd of righteousness, but not just for me to me. For everybody who learns how to fight. Come on. So can I just give you a little bit of motivation? Okay. Why should I fight for this crowd? Jesus said in the same text, Revelation chapter 3, verse 9, he says, I am going to prove to those who hated and persecuted you that I've always loved you. Amen. I want you to fight for your crowd. Because while you're fighting for your crowd, one day I'm going to deliver the burden of proof mm. off of you. Oh, yes. Because you've been telling your neighbors, I'm saved, but they don't believe you, and you're trying to prove that. Mm. You've been telling your children, you've been telling your co workers, you've been telling your haters, I, I, I would get you back, but I can't because I love God. That's right. And I love God because he first loved me. But they didn't believe you. The burden gets heavy when you live in a liberal city, in a wicked city, yes. that celebrates and, and lifts up sin. Uh, it's hard for me to come down and say, you know God loves me. And they say, yeah, right. Help me preach. God said, well, if you fight for the crown, what's going to happen is, I'm going to step in one day. And everybody that didn't hear the words that came out of your mouth, mm -hmm. everybody that talked about you, right. everybody that slapped you, mm -hmm. everybody that did dirt to you, I, I'm going to have them come down before you. And you ain't going to be preach. And I'm going to prove to them I, I always loved them. I, I always chose them. I, they was always my. I'm going to prove to them that while you was in your mama's womb, I knew you. I, I'm going to tell them I chose you. I'm going to tell them. This is 
so much eschatology, and I know we're almost out of time, so I'm going to just be brief. Jesus says, since I've always loved you, I'm not going to let you go through Armageddon. I know you've seen the movie. Hmm? But I'm going to snatch you out. Right. If you're ready. I wish I could help you. I don't know what church you grew up in, but I'm going to preach out the Bible. <laughs> what, what I'm going to do is, what, what I'm getting up that morning, I, I'm going to come and, 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 and I'm going to snatch my believers out of the earth. Oh, yeah. I, I know it's crazy now, but you ain't seen nothing yet. I know there's earthquakes now, but you ain't seen nothing yet. What you see now are just the birth pains because America is pregnant with judgment and that baby's just a kicking and just a kicking. And that's why you see wars and rumors of wars and earthquake and the perversion and the promotion of perversion. He said, but that's just the first and second and third trimester. But be right before that baby gets here to act a clean fool, I'm going to take you out. The devil got your grandpa. Yep. The devil got your great grandpa. Yep. 
and you want to sit here and cry about it, teach my hands to war. Thank you. 